As long as I live, I'll hear waterfalls and birds and wind sing. I'll interpret the rocks, learn the language of flood, storm, and the avalanche. I'll acquaint myself with the glaciers and wild gardens and get as near the heart of the world as I can. Great was the delight of brothers David and Daniel and myself when Father gave us a few pine boards for a boat. And it was a memorable day when we got that boat built and launched into the lake. Never shall I forget our first sail over the gradually deepening water, the sunbeams pouring through it, revealing the strange plants covering the bottom, and the fishes coming about us, staring and wondering as if the boat were a monstrous strange fish. The water was so clear that it was almost invisible. And when we floated slowly out over the plants and fishes, we seemed to be miraculously sustained in the air while silently exploring a veritable fairyland. I set out again afoot and soon came to the great central valley like a flowered lake of pure sunshine. Looking eastward from the summit of Pacheco Pass, one shining morning, a landscape was displayed that after all my wanderings still appears as the most beautiful I have ever beheld. At my feet lay the great central valley of California, level and flowery, like a lake of pure sunshine, 40 or 50 miles wide, 500 miles long, one rich furred garden of yellow composita. And from the eastern boundary of this vast golden flower bed rose the mighty Sierra, miles in height, and so gloriously colored and so radiant, it seemed not clothed with light, but wholly composed of it like the wall of some celestial city. Then it seemed to me that the Sierra should be called not the Nevada or Snowy Range, but the Range of Light. I was a new creature, born again, and truly not until this time was I fairly conscious that I was born at all. Nevermore, thought I, as I strode forward at a faster pace, will I sentimentalize about getting free from the flesh, for it is steeped like a sponge in immortal pleasure. And after 10 years of wandering, and wandering in the heart of it, rejoicing in its glorious floods of light, the white beams of the morning streaming through the passes, the noonday radiance on the crystal rocks, the flush of the alpine glow, and the irised spray of countless waterfalls, it still seems above all others the range of light. All my folk in the soft and the green And jump to the cricket's call Stepping aside for seeds in their time But the leaves fell down in the fall All my folk in the soft and the green And jump to the cricket's call Stepping aside for I'd like to uh, share with you an account of a mountain expedition that Muir experienced with a fellow explorer on April 30th, 1875. This is excerpted from Muir's article, Snowstorm on Mount Shasta, first published in Harper's New Monthly Magazine, September 1877. We lay on our backs so as to present as little surface as possible to the wind. The mealy snow gathered on our breasts, and I did not rise again to my feet for 17 hours. We were glad at first to see the snow drifting into the hollows of our clothing, hoping it would serve to deaden the force of the wind. But though soft at first, it soon froze into a stiff, crusty heap, rather augmenting our novel misery. 
The night wind rushed in wild uproar across the shattered cliffs, piercing us through and through. The weary hours wore away like a mass of unnumbered and half-forgotten years, in which all our other years and experiences were strangely interblended. The extreme beauty of the sky at times beguiled our sense of suffering. Ursa Major, with its thousand home associations, circled in glorious brightness overhead. The mysterious star clouds of the Milky Way arched over with marvelous distinctness, and every planet glowed with long lance rays like lilies within reach. But what you've gained from love, fallen fade from view. Ah, steadfast, be watching over you. Sleep now, angel, sleep. Night steps softly now and grants you leave to ride the wings of truer things to all that you believe. These temple destroyers, devotees of ravaging commercialism, seem to have a perfect contempt for nature, and instead of lifting their eyes to the god of the mountains, lift them to the almighty dollar. Damn Hetch Hetchy! As well damn for water tanks, the people's cathedrals and churches, for no holier temple has ever been consecrated by the heart of man. Most people are on the world, not in it have no conscious sympathy or relationship to anything about them. 
undiffused, separate and rigidly alone like marbles of polished stone, touching but separate. The battle we have fought and are still fighting for the forests is a part of the eternal conflict between right and wrong. And we cannot expect to see the end of it. So we must count on watching and striving for these trees and should always be glad to find anything so surely good and noble to strive for.